Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep liking, commenting, sharing. Everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed. Find us on Facebook and Instagram as Fanny and Jesse. Say hi, we'll say hi back. Our vlogging channel, Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Subscribe and enjoy the content that we put out. Let me know what you want me to react to by giving me the name or the link down below and I'll be sure to check it out. So today I'm going to be reacting to uh, I mean to that answer Moses Jesus Moses Jesus and Muhammad comparison first time coming across this so without wasting time let's get into the video Master did that good evening gents um, I know that the Arabs and the Muslim they are the richest but just one thing, Moses in the Torah, weren't Moses to say for a fact, didn't Moses deny the things of Pharaoh? Because he grew up, as I will say that, he grew up in the palace of Pharaoh, Moses. As you know, you have studied the Bible and it's in Torah. Now, Moses rejected the things of Pharaoh to lead rather the Egyptians it was in afflictions out of Egypt. What do you say according to your, the rich Arabs, and to the poor Jewish people, and Muhammad, and Moses? I... I've never I, understood the question at all. Could you just, could I just get you a brief question? Sum it up in a nutshell. We don't want to give you a wrong answer. I haven't understood your question at all, my son. Will you please? I don't know what the question is. I don't know whether you people have understood. Just the main part of the article. What question. is the question? The question is, what do you say is about this? Moses grew up in Pharaoh's palace. To grow up in a palace is something different. To grow up in the state where you are in affliction. affliction. And can say, for instance, Muhammad, didn't any, I won't say that Muhammad grew up with affliction, and I'll say that Muhammad also, because he married a rich, as you have said it, he married a rich woman. I don't know if she was a widow or anything, but the thing is that I want to know, why do you say, because you say Muhammad's the greatest? Moses denied the riches of Pharaoh. Yeah. Christ denied the riches of the earth, while the devil was entertaining him the world's kingdom. What do you say in conferring to that of Christ, Muhammad, and Moses? Thank you. It looks like the young man has got me into knots. Uncle, I think he's trying to say if you say Muhammad is great, and to clarify your point and to substantiate it, you're saying uh, Muhammad وسلم, lived under poor conditions and denied himself the riches. Uh, didn't Moses do the same? Or I didn't? never made any such statement. You see, now there it is. The man is putting words into my mouth which I never uttered. I don't know what to answer him. I didn't say any such things. I said, look, this man, uh, La Martin, if you heard me correctly, he says, greatness of purpose what the man is out to do. These are his standards. I, I didn't give you these things. These are the Westerner, La Martine, a Frenchman. He is talking about greatness of Muhammad. The greatest man that ever lived, he says, is Muhammad. And the standards he gives, not me. He said, greatness of purpose, smallness of means. What he's thinking about? This child, before he's born, his father dies. Often. By the time he's six, he's doubly often. Is that an asset or a liability? Being born in the home of a pharaoh is an asset. This man is born with liabilities after liabilities. Can you see? Jesus Christ was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was one of the richest of persons. The disciples were following him because he was able to feed them. They didn't pay for it. You know that last supper, you remember? He said, look, go to a certain place. You'll find a mansion there. Find the water, the water carrier, follow him. And you go there and tell them that the master has sent that we must prepare for the feast of the Passover. Everything was found. The lamb was found, the wine was there. They enjoyed themselves. 
Go to another place and you'll find a, a colt and a donkey. Go and bring them. You remember? Look, the man is rich. This man, Muhammad, starts. Doubly often by the time he's six. Another year or so, his grandfather dies. Now his uncle Abu Talib looks after him, looking after his sheep and goats. Smallness of means. No political party. No organized church. Nothing. They were not looking for a liberator, the Arabs. Moses, the, his people were grating under the, Rome, the Egyptian yoke. They want somebody to liberate them. Jesus, when he came, the people were waiting for the Messiah. It's easy. Now, if people are waiting for you, it's easy to prove your, your authority, your bona fide. He just went and said, look, you, the man you're waiting for, it's me. This man, Muhammad, here he comes, nobody's waiting for him. Everything is going against him. He says, there is one God, they had the 360 around the Kaaba. He says, no drink, they were all drunkards. He says, no drink, they were gamblers, he says, no gambling. Look, the greatest controversialist that ever lived was Muhammad. Everything he said is going against the grain. Whatever they're doing, he says, no. They had unlimited number of wives, he restricted them. Slaves, he said, feed them with what you eat and clothe them with, with, with what you wear. And if they make a mistake, you are not inclined to forgive, give them the freedom. At every step, what he starts with and the achievement, the results, look at the results, 1,000 million started how? Moses had a good start, you know, they robbed the Egyptians of all the gold, you remember? The, all the jewelry, they made the golden calf out of what? Out of their gold? No, the Egyptians gold they stole. See, they had a good start, Jesus had a good start, a mighty good start. Muhammad, this is how he began. So I didn't say that I'm only quoting. Now, if you think that Lamartine is exaggerating, then you must prove to the contrary. You must prove to the contrary that this man is exaggerating. Is there another question now? Um, was he trying to argue how Muhammad is the best out of the three? I want to understand something. So Moses came from money, Jesus money, Muhammad not. But um how does their life actually affect the people, you know? How exactly is it affecting the people or what they had to do or the message they came to bring? Sometimes we shouldn't of course, he's saying Moses gave up all the riches. Jesus, I don't know if Jesus also gave up the riches. Well, Muhammad married someone rich, hence was enjoying the riches. But what's the difference? These two enjoyed while they were young. He's enjoying while he's grown. I don't, I don't see. I'm, I'm trying to really understand um this comparison he was trying to make what point was he trying to bring because as far as i'm concerned he was just asking i mean did i comment on on just that that he asked there wasn't much of a question here according to everything that i've heard unless you guys understand him differently let me know down below you know but what are your thoughts about the comparison of jesus and should they even be compared i don't think you should compare people i really don't think people should be compared don't compare yourself to anyone don't compare others to other people you know let me know what you think if there's anything you want me to react to let me know down below and make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video